human aura. That golden halo, familiar to saints and psychics, was long thought of as an artist's fantasy. Today, Curlian photography captures the image of an aura as the energy field surrounding all animate beings. And now, for the first time, In Search Of has made ultra-high-speed motion pictures of the aura around a drop of human blood. Can this radiating pattern offer new insights into disease and health? This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. In almost every religious painting, a golden halo symbolizes divine power of healing. Many stories in the Bible suggest that Jesus' contemporaries could actually see a brilliant aura surrounding him. Here is the recreation of one such story. Two thousand years ago, the sick and lame flocked to the hills around Jerusalem, searching for a mysterious carpenter's son who performed miraculous cures. A rich woman, afflicted with terrible hemorrhaging, had wasted all her money on doctors. She heard that Jesus was passing nearby. If I can touch only the hem of his robe, she said, I will be cured. This is one story in which the Gospels agree. Jesus did not suspect what was about to happen. His healing power, or aura, seemed to have a life of its own. Jesus felt power drain from him. He asked the disciples, who touched me? The woman felt instantly that she was healed. Jesus kept asking, who touched me? When he realized what had happened, he blessed the woman. Your faith has made you whole, he said. Go in peace. Had this woman, who acted in blind faith, drawn the energy from his aura? After Jesus' death, his disciples gathered to pray at the Feast of Pentecost. They recalled Jesus had promised to send the Holy Spirit to comfort and guide them. Then they heard a sound like rushing wind and began to see what they called cloven tongues of fire sitting on each. Later they surmised they had inherited Jesus' healing power. That moment marked the historic beginning of the Christian religion. In Christian art, halos around the heads of saints were actually filled with gold leaf, a priceless commodity in any era. Historians have been unable to trace the origins of this tradition, which has shown a remarkable consistency over 2,000 years. The aura remained a purely psychological phenomenon until the end of the last century, with the pioneering work of W.J. Kilner. This brilliant surgeon, chief of X-ray experimentation at London St. Thomas Hospital, was always popular with patients. Kilner startled the medical world with a completely new diagnostic technique. He had invented an aura screen, a glass plate coated with dicyanin. Through the screen, he could clearly see a pronounced aura around all humans, and the shape of the aura, he claimed, indicated oncoming diseases.
collecting thousands of case histories, he wrote long books on aura diagnosis. And yet, no one else could see an aura through his screen. The medical world branded him a quack. Patients continued to come, however, because his aura diagnoses were accurate. The most momentous discovery came to Kilner by accident, a discovery which would change all of his ideas about the existence of the human aura. One night, he prepared a new mixture of dyes. Persistent staring through strong colors had racked his eyes with pain. He looked away for an instant and began to perceive auras with his own eyes. Could the power to see auras have been all along, not in his chemicals, but in himself? With no students who could carry on his work, Kilner was forgotten. The only carryover from his research, these aura goggles, a novelty item from England. Supposedly, after wearing them for 10 minutes, one can see auras. However, at least for me, they don't produce anything unusual. The ability to see auras remains with a select few. In Search Of has located one individual who apparently has this gift. What's happening in the leg area is there's the, the colors are dimmer. In modern day Los Angeles, Janet um, and Eileen Charlton offer a unique service, <laughs> aura counseling. Janet Charlton claims to see auras surrounding everyone, an ability which was not always a blessing. Since she began to speak, no one believed the colors and shapes she reported. I have seen auras ever since I can remember. I don't physically ever remember not seeing them. I knew how people were feeling just by the lights that were surrounding their bodies. During my childhood, I went from one psychiatrist to the other. I spent lots of time, lots of money going to, I believe there were six of them. Um, Basically, yes, they all thought I was crazy. <laughs> they didn't understand. Um, I learned to more or less keep things to myself rather than saying what I was seeing and saying what I was sensing about people. Janet made this drawing of a healthy human aura as she sees it. According to what's going on in the auric field is how you can tell what disease is coming in. I have found through experience of not only myself watching my own auric field change, but also by watching others' auric field changes, that there is a definite color bleeding that goes on in the auric field that shows up. And it shows up in the auric field before it manifests in the physical body. And suddenly we realized... Her mother-in-law, Eileen Charlton, because long a practitioner I, of psychic healing, was the first to identify Janet's gift. And we discovered that she could see the changes and she could describe what was going on in the client. So we had a feedback system. We had a way of checking one another because it's difficult for a psychic to work alone at times because they're not sure of the information that they're receiving. A woman whose illness had recently been diagnosed by an M.D. volunteered to test the Charlton's. Uh, lower calf area is very orange and very red. Uh, mostly in the calf area, less, not, not so much the front, but the back of the calf. Okay, there's some green in the orange area. That doesn't look like it belongs there. You been having any constipation stuff? Anything like that? Okay. That's probably what that is. The health aura basically looks good, except down in the, in the lower leg area in this right thigh. And it's about four inches away from the body, whereas up in here it's about seven. So I'm channeling some energy. We have no statistical documentation of Janet and Eileen's abilities. 
At least one medical doctor has referred patients to them. Our test subject's reaction is one opinion. Well, the diagnosis is correct as far as the three things that have been bothering me were the legs and water retention and constipation. And they named those three things. So if I were to scale it, I would, I guess, honestly give it like a 90%. These pictures were taken with Curlian photography, a controversial process which claims to give pictures of the aura. A breakthrough from Russia, Curlian photography is just now offering scientists a new method of diagnosis and healing. At the California College of Acupuncture, a state-approved teaching institution, research is ongoing in the field of aura photography. Here, experimenters are trying to capture motion pictures of the energy body by sending high voltage through plants and humans. These are Curlian movies of the sparks around two fingertips. The person on the right reported feeling agitated and angry. Plants. John Hubacher, one of the leading experimenters today. When we take a Curlian photograph of a living object, it will always change, changes very dynamically, very much like we expect the human aura to change. And we believe that these changes do accompany, in human beings, physiological changes, changes of the body, changes of our state of health. We find changes with emotional state. Uh, it's a very complex thing that we're just learning about. Curlian photography doesn't necessarily photograph the aura. It may be photographing a component of the aura. The aura, as clairvoyants claim to see it, does extend out quite a distance from the body. So it's certainly not the aura that clairvoyants talk about, but it may be what they call the inner aura, or the etheric body, or the energy body, or as we're trying to do research here at the California Acupuncture College, the system of acupuncture, chi energy in the body. This maybe is what we're really photographing with Curlian photography. Skeptics have claimed that Curlian auras are nothing more than fancy sparks until the startling phantom leaf experiment was performed by several independent investigators. Ready to go? A generating apparatus produces a controlled alternating current of 40,000 volts. Can you make a longer spark? Part of a still living leaf is cut away and a Curlian movie recorded. You. In this case, with a video image intensifier, the faint electric field can be seen and recorded only in total darkness. One would expect to see just the uncut part of the leaf, and that is usually the case. On rare occasions, however, the leaf seems to remember a ghost of the missing portion. Evidence for the first time that the physical body is not all there is to life. Alan Dietrich has a worldwide reputation for his phantom leaf ability. John Hubacher comments. One of the problems with Curlian photography and the phantom leaves is that work that we had done at UCLA and the work that we had heard about done in other countries, notably Russia, was that the experiment was not reproducible. This means that we would take phantoms, and at UCLA, for instance, we would get phantoms 1%, 2% of the time. They were very difficult to get. Alan had fabulous phantom leaves. He presented these at this New York conference, and he was getting them, uh, how many say, 90% of the time? 90, 95? This is a tremendous uh, result, and so we were all very excited about his ability to generate these phantom leaves. The first time I did it, nobody ever said I couldn't do it, so I just went down and tried it. And I got it the very first time I tried it, so I've been working with it ever since. I haven't changed anything. So. It seems that uh, it may actually be Alan himself that can produce the effect, and this is typical with many types of experiments in parapsychology where the experimenter himself interacts with the experiment quite intimately. The movie apparatus would not produce a complete phantom. Alan Dietrich continued all night with still film. Here are two of his successes. In each case, half a leaf 
produced a complete image. Kirlian photography is now being combined with the ancient Chinese art of acupuncture. Preliminary results hint at a link between Kirlian images and the meridians of acupuncture. Experiments with volunteers are ongoing. The meridians on the feet, the lines of energy, tend to be fairly weak, so we don't expect a very strong discharge. Right now at the California Acupuncture College, that's exactly what we're trying to determine. Whether the energy changes that are traditionally understood by acupuncture can be seen by Kirlian photography. Okay, lights, let's... Uh... The feet show a slight imbalance. Okay, this meridian here, as you see, the large intestine meridian, tends to be very full on the pulse, so we should see this stronger. And we've found out afterwards that there is some intestinal problems, so that corresponds again to the diagnosis. Okay, lights, let's see if the uh, curly in. The hands show generally healthy meridians. Being able to cause and being the under... Dr. Stephen Rosenblatt, president of the college. The body's functioning depends on this energy flow. By changing the energy flow, we change the body's functioning. The Kirlian work, because the reason it's so important and so critical, is that it provides an independent measurement and photograph, an actual picture of what this energy flow that we've been talking about so long is like. And kidney three on the left side. Data is still being collected. Kirlian photos are taken of volunteers before and after the acupuncture. These are strong points to stimulate what are called the yin meridians, which have appeared weak by the pulse diagnosis. The procedure, by the way, is painless, and subjects rarely report any conscious awareness of a change. To stimulate. Now we've had the needles in for a period of about five minutes. I'm putting a little bit of moxa right here on this point, which is an herb which will tend to stimulate the uh, energy here. We should be finding that the left foot, <clears throat> when we take the curling photograph, should be stronger than the right foot. Now we're lighting the moxa, and this should stimulate uh, the meridians in. Can the internal here. energy flow be altered and photographed? Okay. The extreme faintness of the Kirlian image requires total darkness and film pushed to the extreme of sensitivity. The feet are now more in balance. This again is the large intestine line that we determined there was a problem with the large intestine line. And so now we can have the lights and we can see if this side shows up a little more balanced than it did last time. Make a comparison of the two. Okay, lights. The aura around the fingers is stronger. Because of the stress of the environment and other uh, problems in modern life, the body is not perfectly healthy all the time, as we know. What acupuncture does is try and overcome some of these impediments, some of these blockages that uh, occur in the system and return it to a state of balance or a state of flow. And what we're talking about flowing is qi. Qi is the Chinese word for this energy that we're talking about, this animate type of energy, energy that causes the body to be alive and somehow different from the model that we have here. It has a certain life quality. It's this life force, the Chinese designated qi. Other cultures called it qi. The Hindus called it prana. The ancient Hebrews called it ruach. Uh, the Russians today call it biomagnetic force. It's been called orgon. It's been called odic force. All these names throughout history have been given to this particular force. And for the first time in all this history, we're able actually to photograph it. At the orthopedic hospital in Los Angeles, a startling new application of Kirlian energy has been invented by Alfred Benjamin, director of medical photography. The experiment attempts to diagnose diseases in human blood. A Kirlian generator is set up to discharge through the blood onto a glass plate coated with liquid crystals. 
the drop of blood is carefully measured and placed on the crystal plate. An ultra-high speed camera prepares to capture the first one thousandth of a second in the discharge. What we found out, generally speaking, is that normal blood, for instance, has a certain healthy, we call it, pattern, radiating waves coming from the center. They're usually very repetitive. You can repeat it again and again. While with cancer patients, we found the pattern itself is not there as pronounced and sometimes completely gone, disarrayed, no inner circle, no inner corona, and the radiating pattern is missing and bubbles appear, a lot of bubbles sometimes. So we found out there is a certain differentiation between so-called healthy blood and cancer blood on a great proportion. This investigation is preliminary. Alfred Benjamin is hopeful, however, that the elusive aura may yet fulfill its promise of healing power. Hurleyan photography offers a great promise as a tool in the new horizons of medicine. Mystics and visionaries never doubted the existence of the aura. After 2,000 years, science may rediscover its promise of wondrous healing.